In the beginning there was Carl. Once, when night was come, Carl looked up and saw a star in the west. As Carl gazed upon it, the star shone so brightly it consumed all other lights in the heavens and became the only star Carl could see. And Carl thought within himself, saying, It is time for my journey to begin. For all his life he had known he was waiting for a sign, and he knew that when this sign appeared he would follow it. And so Carl departed, and lo, the star which he saw in the west went before him. And no sooner had he begun his journey than he was beset with questions. Why had the star appeared to him this night? Where would it lead him? And what would he find when he arrived? Thought Carl, I have always known of this voyage, but even now that I have departed, I do not know its purpose. And so it was that after much deliberation, Carl decided he would ask the people whom he met along the way to explain to him that which he did not know, and this decision gave him the peace he needed to continue on. Carl traveled on towards the sea. There he met Tupac Bugor, the googly-eyed fisherman. Tupac, Carl said, I am following the brightest star in the heavens, but I do not know its meaning. Can you help me? And Tupac looked up from his nets and said unto him, I do not know of that light so far, but it does bring to mind the Bethlehem star. A child was born, and brought many gifts spiced, and he went by the name of Jesus H. Christ. Jesus Christ, said Carl, who was he? The googly-eyed fisherman's words rang true to Carl, and he thought, So soon in my journey, and already I know a part of its purpose. It's about something called Christmas. And then Carl suddenly understood why he received gifts each year when the days were short and the air was cold. Moreover, he realized with anguish that he had never given anybody a Christmas gift. Alas, he despaired, now I know why I am called Carl, the dog-cheap bastard. The brilliant western star led Carl deep into a thick forest, and finally to a clearing within. There he met Brickyard, the ill-proportioned druid, in deep meditation in front of a towering ash. Brickyard, said Carl, I have just learned of Christmas. Never have I given gifts to my loved ones. I am in despair. And Brickyard said unto Carl, Christmas is not about gifts, you see. It started when Christians abducted the tree. It once was a day to laud each shrub and stick, not to wrap them in lights, which makes me so sick. You have done no wrong. Trust the man in the hood. It's not about giving. It's all about wood. Surely a tradition practiced by so many could not have such nefarious roots, thought Carl, as the star led him out of the woods for cooler climates. And as he walked, he realized with surprise that Christmas had different meanings to Tupac and Brickyard. How could it not mean the same thing to each person? Maybe his purpose was not so clear after all. Perhaps, he thought, this quest is about the one true meaning of Christmas. He bemoaned having no idea of the answer, and as his mind pondered the matter at hand, his feet carried him to a snow-covered hill, where he met Herbo, the Canadian shepherd who was tending to his flock of geese. Carl said to Herbo, I need to know what Christmas means. Fair shepherd, what does it mean to you? Fear flickered in Herbo's weathered face, and he said, Terror and fury. Gifts taken, pain inflicted, Santa the Loathsome. Santa the Loathsome, queried Carl, who is he? Said Herbo, a big red fat suit, comes down your chimney with gifts, leaves them under tree. He's loathsome for leaving you presents, asked Carl, now thoroughly confused. And Herbo said with finality, lazy man, won't do his own work. We get screwed.
The shepherd had brought Carl no closer to the answers he sought. Maybe Santa does batter Canadians, but what about everyone else? Certainly to fear Christmas was not the meaning he sought. And what of this Santa, a faux obese man who squeezes down chimneys and gives away presents? Carl thought to himself, saying, A man so magnanimous, surely he can help me discover the meaning of Christmas. And as fate would have it, the star led Carl further and further north until he was standing at the North Pole, and there met him Blowman, the crotchety Santa. Blowman cast a lazy, drunken eye towards Carl, staggered to his feet, and said, Come closer to me, you strange little man, and let me tell you a tale to spread through the land. I do despise Christmas and all that it brings, from those dirty little elves to those ugly deer with wings. When I left from Chicago to travel points east, I aimed for New England, where on chowder I'd feast. But I was ambushed by elves who brought me up here. They poked me with ice picks and plied me with beer. Told me, they did, that old Santa had split with these parting words, I've had enough of this shit. All people love Santa, or so you were told, but that's just the bait to get you in the fold. What they don't tell you is that most all the toys go to selfish little girls and ungrateful boys. You toil away hard each fall, spring, and summer, so each winter you're poo-pooed. Man, what a bummer! Is there no one to show me the way, said Carl, as he walked away from the blowman? Cannot even Santa himself affirm the goodness of Christmas? So Carl followed the star to the south, and after many a day's journey, he came to a warm place where he found the queen, the leprous beggar. Carl looked at the queen's tattered rags and scaly skin and thought, This man who looks so poor must be rich in spirit. He will help me. Carl said, Queen, I need to know what Christmas means. I have traveled far to seek the answer but I am no closer to finding the truth. You must help me. And the queen looked at Carl and said, There once was a man named the queen who kept getting gifts quite routine, more cars, boats, and houses from friends and from spouses when he just wanted stuff that's obscene. And now I've met somebody who hates all the gifts he receives, laughed Carl. Christmas must be a time of joy and celebration. Yet I have not encountered a single soul who feels that way. My guiding star is perhaps not such a good guide after all, he thought doubtfully. But despite his doubts, Carl journeyed on. He walked through green pastures until he came upon fields teeming with golden flax, and he came upon the man who tended them, who is called Chicken Shake, the arthritic farmer. Chicken Shake, said Carl, how long have I traveled following yonder star, searching for the true meaning of Christmas? But I'm ready to give up. Such people I have met, each more miserable than the last. Please, high farmer, tell me something happy. Chicken Shake pulled on his pipe, and thusly did speak. In earlier times, before I was a farmer, you might laugh today, but I was quite the charmer. I had a way with the maidens. The courting would start, but as I'd fall in love, they would depart. Once in October, took off with some think. Another November, she told me, you stink. A third in December, whereabouts unknown, and therefore each Christmas I was all alone. And so, weary traveler, that is my tale, and I certainly wish that joy could prevail, but each year reminds me I have no true love. That is my Christmas and my feelings thereof. Carl took a moment to reflect on his voyage, and when he thought thereon, he lamented, I have met an angry druid, a frightened Canadian, an exhausted Santa, a frustrated leper, and a lonely farmer, and there was not a good word for Christmas to be had among them. I can go on no more. My journey, alas, is at an end its promise unfulfilled. But as Carl started to turn for home, 
he noticed that the star was very low on the horizon, and very near. Why, it appears to be touching the ground, said Carl. In fact, it is touching the ground. Although Carl was still without any answers about Christmas, he was uplifted by the thought of finally reaching the star he'd sought for so long. Carl ran as fast as he could towards the light, and as he drew near, the less the star looked like a star. In fact, it appeared to be a small building on a busy intersection, radiating brilliant light from every side. An overwhelming confidence filled Carl's heart as he sped towards the building. In there, he thought breathlessly, in there I will find the answer and Carl rushed through the front door into a small theater filled with people watching a Christmas show. A man on stage, who reminded Carl of the frustrated leper, waved for Carl to approach. Confused but thrilled, Carl raced down the aisle, leapt on the stage, and came face to face with the man. This is it, thought Carl. I am about to get my answer. I have never been more certain of anything in my entire life. I will finally know the true meaning of Christmas. And the man put his arm around Carl, looked upon him, and said, Some years later, Carl's aunt came to pay him an unexpected visit. With that, Carl organized the world's apes, enslaved all humans, and decreed that apes in fact do celebrate Christmas, in a very simian way. The end. Thank you.